The AIM-9 Sidewinder, where AIM stands for Air Intercept Missile, is a short-range air-to-air missile which entered service with the United States Navy in 1956 and subsequently was adopted by the US Air Force in 1964. Since then, the Sidewinder has proved to be an enduring international success and its latest variants remain standard equipment in most Western-aligned air forces. This topic will be split into two videos, this one being about AIM-9Bs to AIM-9Hs, while part two will include AIM-9Ls to AIM-9Xs. During World War II, various researchers in Germany designed infrared guidance systems of various complexity. The most mature development of these codenamed Hamburg was intended for use by the Blohmann Voss BV-143 glide bomb in an anti-ship role. Hamburg used a single IR photocell as its detector along with a spinning disc with lines painted on it, alternately known as a reticle. The reticle spun at a fixed speed, causing the output of the photocell to be interrupted in a pattern and the precise timing of the resulting signal indicated the bearing of the target. Although Hamburg and similar devices like Madrid were essentially complete, the work of mating them to a missile had not been carried out by the time the war had ended. In a highly secret effort, the United States provided a few dozen early Sidewinder prototypes to an aviation ordnance team from the US Marine Corps to modify their aircraft to carry the Sidewinder. In the first encounter on 24th of September 1958, the Sidewinders were used to ambush MiG-17s as they flew past the Sabres, thinking they were invulnerable to attack. The MiGs broke formation and descended to the altitude of the Sabres in swirling dogfights. This action marked the first successful use of air-to-air -air missiles in combat, the downed MiGs being their first casualties. The first majorly used Sidewinder was the A-9B. This missile was the first of many rear aspect variants, meaning it could only be fired if behind an aircraft, since that's where the engine is. The AIM-9B was the only Sidewinder to have an uncooled seeker head, meaning that it isn't as sensitive to infrared radiation as the later models are. This made the missile sway off course sometimes and resulted in a lower success ratio than other variants. Despite this, the AIM-9B saw some success in the Vietnam War downing 16 MiG-17s and 9 MiG-21s. The partial success of this missile saw Raytheon, the company who created the Sidewinder, designing new variants. Raytheon saw that the A9B only had a reticle speed of 70 Hz and improved the missile into the next major infrared seeking missile, the A9D. The A9D was the next produced heat seeking air to air missile and used the A9B as its base design with a few great upgrades. One of the major upgrades was a nitrogen cooled seeker head, allowing the missile to track further distances and become more sensitive to heat. Another key upgrade was the reticle speed, which went from 70 Hz to 125 Hz, allowing it to make more course corrections and hit the target. More ballistic improvements and a better rocket booster meant the AIM-9D could not only pull up to 18 Gs instead of 10, but had a higher top speed giving it higher launch range and hitting the target quicker. Although it still used thermionic electronics instead of solid state, it was a great missile for the time. In the Vietnam War, the AIM-9D brought down 17 MiG-21s and 21 MiG-17s. It's just a coincidence those numbers are the same as the model of MiG. Although the AIM-9E is considered inferior in terms of performance when compared with the AIM-9D, it did have an uncaged seeker, something never seen before on a missile. This meant that once the missile had lock, the seeker head would constantly move to keep the target right in front of it. This meant you didn't have to fly exactly behind the enemy once you'd achieved a lock. The seeker head was also cooled, but by Peltier instead. Peltier cooling requires a voltage over a semiconductor, or many in a row. On one side, the semiconductor would get very cold, and this was the side attached to the seeker head, and one side that got hot. This hot side had a small heat sink on it to dissipate heat and make the temperature on the cold side colder, allowing the seeker head to be more sensitive to heat. 
However, the ballistics of this missile weren't great, and it could only pull 10 Gs like the AIM-9B, even though the reticle moved at 100 Hz. The Air Force needed a better missile than this, and Raytheon delivered. Based off the AIM-9D, the AIM-9G shared most of the features with it, including reticle speed, nitrogen cooling and thermionic electronics, which use vacuum tubes instead of a microprocessor to drive corrective commands to the control surfaces. The AIM-9G also shared the same ballistics as the AIM-9D with the same 18G maximum overload. But there was one key difference. The AIM-9G had an uncaged seeker, giving it the benefits that I talked about in the AIM-9E part of this video. However, unlike the AIM-9E, the AIM-9G seeker head was so uncaged, if you will, that it could track a target whilst it was almost 90 degrees to the seeker head. This gave it much better dogfight capabilities as the pilot could pull much more lead for the missile, making hitting the target a much easier objective. Although the AIM-9G was a major success, it came a bit too late to the Vietnam War to gain major air superiority and only downed 7 MiG-21s and 7 MiG-17s. However, Raytheon didn't stop designing new variants because the war was over. Instead, they used the AIM-9G to build a new missile. Based off the AIM-9G, the AIM-9H saw production from 1972 to 74 and use in the Cold War. Designed to be launched from F-14s and other aircraft, the AIM-9H was considered the best non-all-aspect sidewinder to be made. It shared the advantages of the AIM-9G, with only one thing being changed. At this time, solid-state technology was advancing very quick, and becoming faster and more efficient than its thermionic counterparts. Raytheon saw this and decided to make a whole new AIM-9G, but with solid-state electronics instead. What are solid state electronics? Well, a brief explanation would be that there are lots of tiny switches turning on and off very fast to produce instructions. The device you're using now has these solid state processes in them. Anyway, this meant that the AIM-9H had a track rate of 20 degrees per second compared with the AIM-9G's 12.5 degrees per second. This meant the AIM-9H could track much better and utilize that 18G overload much more. This was the missile that led to the first all aspect variant, the AIM-9L, but we'll save that for another video. So guys, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please comment what video you would like next. This video took me quite a long time to make. The script alone took about one hour to write and the whole video to edit took around three to four hours. So if you value my time and effort, then please subscribe. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.